you can be sure that that arrow is going to hit exactly where he's aiming for, under pressure, with wind, you know, with the sun in his face, or whatever the conditions are, he's a master. It's a pretty phenomenal and awe-inspiring thing to behold. You look at Dudley, he started off as an archer himself and built his resume of experience over decades. So he has the knowledge and experience in the craft that he's trying to impart on other people. And you have to have those two things. It's, it's amazing to watch. It's incredible to be around. I'm very fortunate to be able to draft off of him. First parts of my life kind of went quick. Born on Fort Bragg, grew up as a kid down in the Mississippi Delta. My uncle Kenny got me into, into hunting along with my grandfather. It was like a family tradition. It was never about competition at the time. It was really just about, you know, bow hunting or hunting in general. I knew I was okay at archery, but I didn't know I was bad at archery. And then this moment happens where I went to this archery shoot that I saw and I lost all the arrows I had in my quiver and immediately left this, this tournament, went and bought more arrows, went back to the tournament just so I can say, I just want to finish this thing. Like, let me just get to the last target. I was in the archery range where all the top guys had been kind of there representing. I was in there kind of being a weird stalker and I just had to get better because I didn't want to suck at it. And then for whatever reason, I don't really know to this day if it was because they wanted me to, to like get me away from people and asking them so many questions or if the, the, the manager of the shop legitimately was in a pinch, but I remember him being like, hey kid, come over here. And he takes me into this back room. And he's like, I've got to get these arrows fletched for this customer. He goes, I'm going to show you how to do it. So I just started doing that. And then fast forward several weeks later, I'm still in this room, just fletching arrows for this guy. And I, I remember asking the question like, hey man, do I ever get paid for this? And he looked right at me and he's like, you can't put a value on what you're learning right now. And as that was happening, I was progressively getting really good quick at archery. And I remember just something clicked where I went to this tournament and just made this huge jump. And I realized this is, this is something that I'm like here to do. I was going to local tournaments then regional tournaments, then I qualified for my first Worlds right from there, you know, Rookie of the Year. But once I made the team, the U.S. archery team, and I knew that if I did my job, the, the national anthem would be playing when the flags came up on the top three podiums. There's like no more rewarding feeling, at least for me, as a competitor. Every single time that arrow hits the center, I mean, it is, completion of perfection each and every time. But the reason to this day, the reason I left the U.S. archery team was because the World Cup changed to where they started making the World Cup final during elk season. And I remember telling them, I am not going to shoot a tournament instead of chase elk. Like that part of me that just wanted to win shoots, now that part of me wants to punch a tag on a mountain. Bow hunting, when you would look at it on paper, you'd say, oh, you find an animal, you shoot it with an arrow. Pretty simple. It's one of the most complicated things I've ever done in my life. There's so many different 
things that you have to have. First of all, you have to have physical fitness. And this is something that John works on very hard. You have to have cardio. You, you have to be able to hoof it up through the mountains. You have to be able to make your heart rate drop after you've climbed elevation and you've really sweated and pushed yourself. You have to have strength in your shoulders. You have to have strength in your back. During the moment of truth, you have to be able to focus on the task at hand and execute. I mean, when you see, when bow hunters meet that guy and you see the respect and the reverence they have for him, you understand what a, what a real master he is at what he does. You will notice there are no steps present that don't absolutely need to be present. The process looks like somebody that's done it a lot, a lot, a lot. This whole road for me is all about perfecting this process to where now, if I focus on the process, then everything else takes care of itself. And with archery, that's what I want. I want to make it look easy. You want to be successful. You know, for me, I want to relive that memory putting it on the grill, you know, and then feeding it to a bunch of my friends and being like, here it is. To me, that's a new prize. So hunting is a challenge and a reward. One's in the field, one's on a fork. There came a point where I just, I didn't want to be identified just as a shooter because for me, archery, there's more to it. Archery for me is 365 days a year, mostly dark to dark. I wanna be able to educate people. I wanna be able to have input on product designs. I wanna be able to give product reviews. I wanna be able to have a platform for, for writing articles. And, and so we kind of decided to come up with this brand, kind of become an information source. At one time I was telling this to my wife Sharon, I'm like, you know, we have this community. And I remember her saying like, yeah, we're, we're like a knock on nation. And so that's how it started. So then I started to realize, yeah, this isn't about me. This is about, this is about our community. And how do I, how do I just be the leader to that community and like just give back every bit of knowledge that I struggled to, to kind of find on my own, being that kid walking around that archery club that Monday after sucking. What I can tell you is the feedback that I constantly and consistently get is that he is one of the most impactful and influential people in that space. Not because of what he has done in the past, but because of how well he can teach people to do those things and replicate them into the future. He grabs your bow, which has a different draw length, picks it up, pulls it back and he can tell you exactly why you just missed two inches of low on a 40 yard target. It's like, oh, you're holding it like this or this is what's going on with your bow. It was built this way. Or that's the kind of thing that is impressive. When you see how many people are shooting with tension-based releases now, how many people are hunting with silverback releases, uh, how many people are fully concentrated on executing surprise shots with perfect form, and how many of them credit John Dudley's coaching and his online videos with, with inspiring and educating them. I mean, I, I think he's probably one of the most Im impactful people in the history of bow hunting. Traveled with a bow case every trip of my life till I was 37. I had a bow case, at least one. And I think I would be like, why, why did you do all that? Like, what, what was the real purpose? Because in the end, what I've come to find out is every like every medal I've won, every trophy I've won, they just tarnish. But when I was with Andy, when he shot that bull on 9-11, like I looked at him like, you know it's 9-11, right? And he's like, goddamn right I know it's 9-11. And I mean, I could just see like all this emotion hit. And I'm like, this means more to me than anything. Like this, every single thing I've done, you know, tournaments I've lost because I didn't do something right, everything I've had to self-teach, every sacrifice I've made. It's like all that stuff washes away when you get to experience those types of memories. And I think with a bow, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to shoot it and I'm supposed to teach it.